to Party Sad Peoples. <laughs> My name is yes. Avi. I'm joined here by Mikey, Stacy, and Steve. And today, we're going to talk about Johnny Mnemonic. Oh, yes. The we're going to talk about Neo from The Matrix. Oh, yes. We're, we're going to talk, talk about, about John Wick. We're going to talk about <laughs> Bill and Ted. As up, Samurai. <laughs> we just yeah, yeah. We got a game to anyway. discuss. We got a game to discuss. We got. I don't know, Ted. We gotta stick it to the corpos. But maybe if we went back in time, <laughs> if, we go, if we go into the future when we've already destroyed the corporate bureaucracy. Uh, no. Okay. So I think this is actually not a bad way to start the podcast because that's for me what really made the hype for this game so ridiculous is Keanu Reeves coming out on stage during the video game awards and the crowd going ah. <laughs> you're not you're not wrong i'm mm -hmm. totally not wrong um and apparently he did enjoy recording his part of the video game he's got nothing to do with the the rest of what happened with that game he's just an actor he was hired to job. read some lines so <laughs> and overall uh, i would say he did a good job at it i got no complaints there are scenes that make me think he did the full mocap thing too oh he did oh really I'm pretty sure he okay. did there's, there's no way the uh, little mannerisms are just too much like him. I mean, you know? someone mocapped him, right? We, we know from Last of Us that you can have the model and the, the performance capture artists and the voice artists all be different people. But yeah, in any case, I'm pretty sure I saw a shot of him in a motion cap studio. Gotcha. Um, so I'm pretty sure he did it himself. So Chooms. But, uh, that's what they call people in cyberpunk world. Yeah. You're, you're, it's chooms. like chums. Yeah. I guess. Uh, how are you guys friends, enjoying this game? But you bunch of chooms. And another word I like is gonk. <laughs> gonk. You're such, you're such a gonk. Yeah. That's more it of is, an insult. It is currently a solid seven out of ten. I'm with that. <laughs> I'm with that. So I don't so, know what the heck to score this game. I refuse to score this game for the next two months on the grounds um, that that's so yeah. I think so, most of my gripes with it, like from a story standpoint and an immersion standpoint. And a graphical standpoint, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. For sure. From yeah. a technical standpoint, it is a hot mess. It is. It's yeah. literally simultaneously excellent and bad. Yeah. Uh, like, I didn't yeah. know you could and, marry those two things in this way, but you can. Software, man. Yeah, and, I, I, I want to point out, too, like I watched the credits, and there are something like 60, 70 names attached to the radio stations in the game. Wow. Mm. Writers, actors who play like news announcers, um, yeah. the songs and the musicians that, that did them, the composers, all that. Yeah. Um, but then you get to the QA and the most important person on the QA team is the <clears throat> outsource director. Oh my God. I, uh, Let's I, talk I, about QA. I'm curious <laughs> how this game got out of its QA stages in the state that it's in. It's on simple. Multiple <laughs> platforms. It's simple. <laughs> there was a, there was a unscheduled investor call. Where they basically said, "Oh, we just didn't really test it on last year." Well, I I listened to the call because they put it they put oh, it yeah? out publicly. Oh, did right? you? Yeah, you were bored. They were, okay. they were taking. I listened to it at work because I was doing like tedious spreadsheet stuff. Uh -huh. So I was listening to it and I was just like, "Like, how does it hurt your sales? How do you feel about this?" Like a lot of questions, and I think one of my favorite questions, it was something along the lines of like, "Do you find it ironic?" <laughs> how like a big company is releasing a game that's allegorical about big companies failing the consumer. <laughs> and then like, yeah, we agree. <laughs> and, then, and then they moved on. <laughs> right. They're trying to I mean, do what, what you call. There, what, is, what else is there to say? I mean, uh, not much considering like, I mean, they're taking the blame pretty well. Eh, but what they're what they're doing is what's called brush been... fire politics. I've been in enough large corporations to say when you screw up this I always badly, knew you were a corporal rat. I am a corporal rat. <laughs> One of her characters is. Game. Yeah, uh, that is the character I played <laughs> the most on, on this game. It's a corporal rat. But seriously, um, it is politically in your best interest to admit your mistake in full mm -hmm. and offer to correct it however way you can along with an apology well yeah it's that's just it's just the, good business good PR. they yeah. are not being good people this is how to make the most money right it's good them. pr and it shows you like oh we're for the consumer by a, you know saying we're sorry yeah and, and we'll fix it and i think right. uh i think there's there's two things i want to get out of the way from the top the first is how much has everyone played and where so i think we can do that pretty fast 
I am yeah. just over 30 hours in. Um, I, I don't know if how much I want to give away plot wise of where I am. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I mean, we're talking cyberpunk, there's going to be mild spoilers. Anyone yeah, who's, yeah, that was a yeah, spoiler. I will, I will needs to go away. When, when, I'm, I'm just at the preparation stage of uh, the parade. I see, okay. yeah, I know exactly so, like, where you are. Yeah. I have the mission hanging over my head of going to meet Takamura, and I keep blowing him off for side missions. Right. <laughs> when, you, when you go to your when you go to the screen that has your inventory and crafting menu and all that stuff um you are presented with a little thing and one of the one of the three main things is got a little picture of a pill on it mm. and it'll give you some percentage towards how close uh, are you to yeah, being dead yeah. basically okay. and that will progress over time so that's one i like way that to the loading measure. screen progresses <laughs> like the work. main the main title screen Mm -hmm. depending yeah. on where you are in the story like it's literally the state of the world at the time yeah 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 i i almost want to talk about just the experience of starting the game because first, of what much? they had to do to accommodate multiple platforms but first how much and when uh, sorry how much and oh when? right, right. <laughs> uh, i have played probably 60 70 hours at least uh i have played through one ending um since that was oh wow relatively short i am working on another ending i am aware that there are at least four i would like to play them all at some point okay uh, not necessarily with the same character but i have mostly played a corporal rat i'm sort of a street kid i've cool. opted for street kid yep uh with a focus on like hacking and stuff so i do a lot of quick hacks a lot of like technical stuff so i have like most of my points dumped into that nice mm. i have i'm probably sub 10 I waited on this game a long time because uh, Stacy was monopolizing the PS5, and, <laughs> and I tr and I played it a little bit on PS4, and I was just like, "This game nope. is good. The introduction is good. I like the way it's setting up the characters." And then I hit the point where, like, I was like, "Let me go explore the open world," and I was just like, "Oh no, nope. This yeah. is this is bad. This is, this is becoming a syndrome we're seeing in video games, where the first two to three hours of play <clears> have been <throat> have been polished, and then mm -hmm. oh no." Oh yep. no. Well, I feel just I find for, it like just for the, prudence uh... sake, Mikey. Yes. How much have you played? Uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have just someone on the podcast. I find that like that perspective. what you get out of like E3 demos these days is they refine that kind of starting experience to show you what the game the is. The vertical slice. Yeah, yeah. and it's then the rest of it is just like <clears throat> could go either way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sonny, <clears throat> how much thing. have you played? Uh, sub 10 hours pl going nomad but yeah. i i waited all the time bought it on pc because i wanted to i wanted the contrast and then on pc i was just like wow this is just this is just good like mm. when the game but on pc when when the game crashes because you know that happens um i've never had I, a pc crash nice well i have because oh, wow. i do i do stupid shit and i push my 1070 way too far okay. uh, well and you're you're trying enough. trying to stream and you're using an old video card i've done that so and let's I do specify. It at 1440 and like and you've used like steam controller with it like you yeah. push the limit to contrast that i don't want to be a, i'm running I, a 2080 super with rtx i'm so. asking okay. for it that's, yeah. that's what's happening. Nice. So nice. Okay. when it comes to PC, though, <laughs> when the game crashes, it doesn't hard lock anything. That's already like better than a lot of games. And uh, you get a little crash handler that's, you know, their crash handler. But the funniest part about the whole goddamn thing is that when you submit the crash report, it says, thanks, Choom. Like, <laughs> they literally, <laughs> they literally like put the character of their universe into their crash handler. That's kind right. of normal. they but that they leaves don't, me... they don't break the illusion even for exactly. game crash. The yeah. second thing that I wanted to talk about is that yeah. this game is uh, surprisingly to me, uh, when I'm realizing what they're doing, they're not making the next Deus Ex, although yes, in some ways, they're making the next GTA. And I don't just mean that in that like you go around and you do crazy shit. I mean that in that that's their business model. They're mm. going to do multiplayer eventually. There's going to be DLC. They've built an engine. They're trying to work out the fundamentals of that engine. <clears throat> Boy, does that engine need some help from a from mm. a console perspective? Yes, for mm. sure. That's the thing. Do you so, enjoy like... T posing? <laughs> <laughs> I love T posing, and it really helps me immerse myself into a world give when us, a character gets into break. a car like this. 
give us a T-bone. <laughs> <laughs> give us or a rides a motorcycle <laughs> like this with, with no pants on. But That's they're standing on top of it, so it's shot. like... Yeah, it's yeah. Just a motorcycle rolling down the street with a T-pose guy on top of it. My right. favorite bug is the most uh, inane bullshit ever. Like, this is something that would not bother most people. But on PlayStation, when you dismantle an item in your inventory and it being removed subtracts the number of rows in the interface by one, the mm -hmm. interface mm -hmm. does this. Yeah. And so, as a developer, like I a hate wet it. fart. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and so share. So I have I have a gripe that is uh, RP Actually, I'm stop it of the game, mm -hmm. where like you'll be walking with a character who has like quest dialogue to tell you, and it's like follow this person, and it forces you into this walk animation. But if you look down at the legs while you're walking, they're like tripping over each other constantly. Oh god! So they're not like walking at a pace, and then they're like forcing you into it. So if you manage oh to god. slip past them, you go back into your run. I can explain to you what's happening <laughs> with that, but not All right. now. Yeah, so just really quick, I kind of wanted to, I've got a bug video from Alfix. He's compiled uh, a bunch of things. I've seen that, a good portion happened. of these. So we're just going to let it roll while we uh, is that talk. Your, is that your because... Zoom window at the bottom? Because <laughs> to us, it shows up as I think like it's, an ad, it's the ad bar. Oh, OK, cool. It's like a video ad bar, but it, it blocks the ad it out. Bar. Yep, yep. So, like, this is an example of... I saw this <laughs> one. It's gone, uh... it's gone horribly wrong. Uh, at one point, my car hit a pedestrian, <laughs> and, of course, the pedestrian fell over, but then oh, the pedestrian okay. stood back up, and when they did, they flipped the car back to its correct position. That's great. That yeah. looks like a shark. Um, you guys, one of physics is hard. The physics is bad. So, like, there's kind of Fallout-style ragdoll physics, <laughs> and that I could almost understand, but some of it just goes... It's a feature, wow. not a bug. Wow. How is this possible? So what one of, is happening? One of them, <laughs> again, great. with, like, the RP stuff, this is I've been actually... having stuff like this, where you'll be driving with somebody, but they'll just drive <laughs> through a car. Yeah. That was or a cute little thing uh, Things hovering in the air. That happens a lot. Yeah, one yeah. of my... My particular biggest pet peeve is when there are objects on the ground and you can't pick them up. Yes, because, because they're blocked by some geometry that's invisible. So. Right. <laughs> so if I can so you're staring out at a thing you want and you can never have it. And there's actually Whoa. two of these <laughs> near the front door of your apartment. Whoa. So Damn. You couldn't be like, how is it possible that this is your home base yeah. and they haven't even corrected the ones right? There. I can all right. I can I can start to geek out and explain some of this shit. So, okay. um, so so part of what's happening with this game, right? That we know broadly speaking is if you have the sufficient hardware, the game runs okay. But if you don't have the sufficient hardware, the game may hiccup, and it may hiccup in interesting ways. And a lot of what's in common with all of these is the physics simulation. If you play Rocket League and you only are running the game at 30 or 60 frames per second, for example, it no. actually still does the physics. That's pretty funny. It actually still does the physics. <laughs> at, that's awesome. It actually still wow. does the physics at 144 cycles per second what? for Rocket League. And so <laughs> part of what's going on is this is a big open world. We have to simulate all these physics objects, but at what rate mm -hmm. are we going to update their cycle? Well, that depends on your CPU. And if your CPU is doing shitty stuff, then you do this. This That right there was a good example of a common bug in Super Mario 64 speedrunning, actually, where you play with the physics in order to give yourself an absurd amount of speed. You could fix that literally just by putting a hard cap on the player's speed in the physics simulation. That That's um, a bug fix right there. But I, software is hard. Yep. Well, I, I have a fun hard, bug to but... share. <laughs> software is easier when you test it, and, yes. and at least on consoles, it's completely obvious they didn't even try. Uh, well, but Ricky, go ahead, tell us about your, from Rockstar. Tell us about so your... a friend showed me a bug of where he went into an alleyway, and there was a guy with a VR mask eating garbage and peeing uncontrollably. That's awesome. <laughs> so it looked like he was peeing, but then the animation didn't stop. So he's eating a piece of garbage, walking around with a VR headset, and then he started chasing um, his character. That's so awesome. he's turning around, and there's just a pee stream. Yeah, I I, as a girl, it does feel a little weird well, that you go into men's bathrooms and there are guys peeing, which, fine, makes sense. 
that's a thing, guys. Do. <laughs> there, there are no women peeing in bathrooms in the cyberpunk universe <laughs> because they don't <laughs> pee. Hold on, let's no, be clear. It's because someone would make an entire YouTube video out of being a complete creeper. Let's be real. That's I don't, probably I don't know. Decision. You could at least put them in a stall where you can't really see them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know? could. There's not even. Oh that. my gosh. Gamers would find a way though. It's weird. And anyway, how about we start talking about the good things? I'm actually really interested well, in what this I do thing is transition, this the world. Yeah. I, I do want to transition because <laughs> but, the weird thing about being cyberpunk, I forgive a lot of this shit. So, so again, and I got to stop here. As much as I don't want the whole podcast to be about bugs, <laughs> I think it's really important to talk about the difference in platform. So the Xbox yes. is the only platform we haven't tried, but I would assume it's similar to the difference between PlayStation 4 and 5. Oh, right? Stacy. Before before you guys go crazy with us, I have a general question just to ask, and I don't know if you guys have any insight. Yeah. So, PlayStation started offering refunds on this game and and, and platforms, and they mm-hmm. took it off what, their store. Entirely. Store. But so, what I have a question is: everyone is going off on Project CD Red, blah blah blah, whatever. Oh, this is Sony and Microsoft fault too. They, they there's a certifi- there's a certification yes. process, and on that call, and, the first thing I said is how did <laughs> how did this get through Sony's certification? So apparently, what happened is Sony tested the game, gave them a whole list of bugs. Can we put and- quotes around that? And, and <laughs> CD, well, yeah, no, they sent, a, they sent a list of bugs and they sent their list to CD Projekt Red and their experience in the past with that same company is that they would largely fix the bugs before release. So they just trusted that they did that. So they have a good faith. It's like a so good faith relationship. A good faith and, and they got burned for, for trusting the company. Basically. Wow. Yeah. And I kind of, I kind of can understand it, but also it makes me wonder if they're not going to, it's not going to force them to have an extra step in their certification process. Now let's check and make sure you actually fix yeah, any, and, any. Well, maybe it's a policy, like say like, Hey, like you said, maybe it's just like, okay, we have a relationship with this company. They're good yeah. for it until if, they're not. And established right. relationships even are Even one totally person normal. had played this game for five hours tops. They would have known not to put this on their store. Right. If, gotcha. if, if, uh, if Apple is anything to go by, right. Um, if you're an independent developer, making your first <laughs> game for Apple devices and you submit it to the app store, someone's going to look at it and they're probably going to look at it pretty thoroughly. If mm-hmm. you are, let's say Adobe, you have a dedicated representative to talk to and that human being might actually say, yeah, it's fine. It's just a patch thing. I don't have time today to deal with this. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and like, that's how <laughs> this works. So someone dropped the ball but wow. it's really on all the companies and during that uh during that call that unscheduled investor call they acknowledged it they really genuinely just said like oh yeah they trusted us <laughs> that's it and that's wow. how it got on the you're podcast. bad shouldn't have trusted me i mean I that can't feel good for sony or microsoft to hear that yeah you yep. know, like oh and wow what, what, what i find funny is. what i find funny is there's an amazing amount of like software stuff going on here that I don't have patience for as a software developer, like entire categories of human errors that have been eliminated by modern programming languages, but they're probably using JavaScript for all this bullshit. I have, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate. I don't want to speculate, but you can tell that they deprioritized quality testing. Like they didn't want to hear it. So they didn't listen. Rockstar. It's the rock star model. It is you guys. kind of the rock star model. And it's like, I know better. Your job is just to listen to me and yeah. do what I want. Just yeah. get it done. Get it released. I don't care. Just do it. Agreed. And this is mm-hmm. what I, this is what happens. So on PlayStation 5, when the game first came out, it was is that a woman peeing? Oh boy. Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> maybe she has a penis. We don't know. Uh so the penis hasn't loaded. Oh dear, it's still happening. Yes. It's still happening. Anyway. <laughs> just walking around. Oh, no. just, dear God. oh dear. Uh that's a continence in the extreme. Anyway, uh <laughs> so on PlayStation 5 when the game first came out, it was a major crash every hour that would render the game inexplicable, have to reload, something serious enough that you'd have to have to do something to to quit what you were doing in the game and and either reload a save or just leave the scene and come back something that would waste your time and about once an hour it would crash completely (laughs) and because the game takes so long to start up that just is frustrating in and of itself especially on 
especially on last gen hardware because they right. don't have SSDs. Yeah, and it has gotten better. So I can now go two, three <laughs> hours at a time without a full game crash. The really severe issues are far less frequent, though audio glitches still occur relatively often. It seems like those haven't been prioritized for uh, the video glitches are, are clearly the most important. But uh, PlayStation 4 was just plain unplayable. It just seemed like the video settings they chose were completely inappropriate for that console and were bound to cause problems. It's mostly, in my experience, has to do with what do you do at a software level when nothing is loading on time, according to you? And that's a really hard software problem, honestly. Like, just don't release the game on those platforms that don't have an SSD if the performance using a mm. hard drive is just ass. Now, right. mm. that's, that's not my claim, is that it is ass, because I have not played the latest patch on the old devices and they put out some significant patches very fast. What I do wanna say real quick to transition into the good stuff is this is Skyrim except cyberpunk in a lot of ways, but that is actually personally sufficient for me to forgive way too much because when you're in cyberpunk, these glitches on some level are just like, oh, my simulacra of a simulacra is simulacraing, And mm -hmm. it's just it's just bugs because- it's, it's the most appropriate platform for bugs imaginable. Yeah, when you skip a line you of dialogue- a, You have a chip like in a your glitch. head that makes you question reality. So, so that's funny. I think a good level. way to like transition into the good stuff is to say that like, like the bugs can take you out of the game, but once you're in that immersive state and the game is working as kind of like intended, yeah. it really draws you in in a lot of ways with like the contextual um, dialogue options where you sit, stand, lean against stuff to like go into like a natural conversational pose. It's not just you being a giddy gamer like walking I've been around waiting, a person. I've been waiting you know? for them to just let me sit the fuck down during a conversation yeah. forever. Yeah. yeah. So, like put yourself in like a nice kind of cinematic sort of pose to really give you like a feel of your being in the game. And they've yeah. done that with like dialogue options and the way the city looks and like the atmospheres they put you in for those conversations. Yeah. One thing that I super appreciate is the decisions are actually very consequential. Relatively mm -hmm. early on mm -hmm. in the game, someone that you know dies and you have to decide what to do with their body. Um, and Zavi and I chose differently and I found out that he went to a funeral and I was like oh my god I missed that I didn't even get to go there was no funeral because of the body and right. then uh. the payoff for me came towards the end of the game there's probably an hour left of game time hmm. and you find out what happened to him and you're like oh man hmm. I should have done the other thing hmm. on the other hand now I know what happens to people when wow. they disappear there's kind of an interesting wow. mechanic where, like, if you kill uh, an NPC that would give you a mission, like, earlier than you meet them, that mission just won't show up for you. Right. Classic yeah. because you world, can, Skyrim You can stuff. kill them, you know? Like, in Skyrim, it was more of, like, you couldn't kill important NPCs. Ah, so maybe you know? even further back, like, Morrowind type shit. Yeah. So it's like this. There, there are a few characters I'm pretty sure you can't kill, and some of those right. Are well, because interests. they're integral to the main story. But, but the like, game is also like way. very clear yeah. about that stuff. Like in Skyrim, it would be like hack, 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 hack. Why aren't you dying? Right. In this game, it's like <laughs> in this game, it's like I push L L two uh, left trigger, mm -hmm. and they put the gun up, but they put it up like this, so it's clear that I can't shoot them. It's treating them like right. a friendly. Yeah. So um, I really like that. I really like that they don't really give you contextual, like. Um, bread crummy kind of dialogue lines where like if you go into an area that might be hostile right. without knowing it's going to be hostile if you just walk in there they start shooting you there's no like oh I probably shouldn't <laughs> go in there yeah, yeah, yeah kind of thing right. right like there's nothing yeah. to like they're, they're say don't go there basically. yeah and I yeah. think that's kind of cool and immersive in the world because you wouldn't know if you're walking into a place that where people are going to be mad that you're there you know yeah yeah I want to share uh, the bit of video that Zavi recorded um, so this is a part relatively early in the game, and this is one of those areas where you have multiple options. You can um, try and be hack, sneaky, what have you. You can try and use dialogue to be persuasive. And I like that if you take too long, shit just pops off. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also this depends in part on earlier parts of the game and conversations you may have had. Um, you may be dealing with some corporate people in the background that are trying to help you or sabotage you. And depending on who is alive at that corporation and who isn't based on your actions previously, it might make your job easier or harder at this mm. point. So your goal is to get this thing in this case here, which turns out to be a little autonomous robot. And it's worth an incredible amount of money. So you're trying to buy it off this guy that wants to sell it for an exorbitant price. And your fixer says he already paid for it, but the guy he paid was killed. And the new guy in charge doesn't want to honor the deal. So this is the dilemma that you find yourself yeah. in. Yeah, and so this particular gameplay is actually very dark, which I'll geek out on for like one minute. This game has really good high dynamic range lighting. Um, it's high quality if you have the monitor for it mm -hmm. and you have the graphics card for it. It's, it's really good looking. Yeah. It also has the best HDR settings I've ever seen because of streaming. You can very easily toggle back between <laughs> OBS and the game and it won't crash. And you can see what this will look like for the stream. And they gave you the controls to make it look good no matter what. Now it's a little dark here because I hadn't quite figured out the settings that are good, but like, you get the sense of like, there's the dark stuff and there's the light stuff. And on my screen, I can mostly see everything because I have the screen for it, but it still looks good on the stream. Like this is a problem that people have been trying to tackle for a while. Yeah, that's the irony of this is there's actually some decent stuff back here. I really hope the people that worked on this game don't feel bad because of things that are outside their control. like. There are a ton of people in this game that probably wish it hadn't shipped when it shipped, but it wasn't their call to make. Yeah. Right? Uh, and if the game had been polished, if they've been given another couple of months the way I'm sure they were, were begging for, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure people quit yeah. over this too. Uh, and I don't know what to tell those people. What was the right thing for them to do? This is part of why I think it's really important that this industry unionize so that the Calls don't get made by people who don't understand. Well, it's what that dilemma, right? About. Like of the publisher and the fans. So you have the fans who are crying because they did delayed, it, delayed, delayed, delayed. Oh, I can't believe they're delaying it again. I'm and the good news is, I think most people were generally like. And then you have the publisher time. who's pushing and pushing and pushing to to do something like get it out right after a major console release, mm -hmm. sure. just in time for the holidays mm -hmm. for a big sale rush. Yeah, right? and for my non pro programmer's point of view i don't understand what's the hold up the game is finished it has a beginning a middle and an end why don't we just right. ship it we're losing money every day we have these programmers work and we can't make any sales right and the reality is that games always are a piece of shit until they're really good because there's probably fundamental problems that need to get solved even though you can technically complete the game and that's just an ambiguous call what do you, do you put yeah. it on or not yeah. yeah, so like I can tell that they are still racing to catch up because as I get near the end of the game, um, and I might we might play that part later, you you reach a corporate tower and each floor is similar for a little while. And the first couple of times you go through the floors, you've got these rows of computers and you can zoom in and some of them have messages and some of them just have the internet. And, uh, when you get to the next floor, I was having issues where you kind of try to zoom into the monitor and you would turn to the right so you can't actually see it anymore. It's just like, it just, Little it's, hiccups. camera angle is broken, right? Right. Um, and it got even weirder. You would turn to the right and you would see your own shoulder. At one point I turned to the right and I saw my own body headless staring back at me. <laughs> and it was like, what? And then finally you reach the last floor and they've just given up entirely. There are rows of computers you can't click on them at all. Yeah. So wow. you can kind of feel somebody just despairing and giving up on the whole situation. That being said, <laughs> I do like a lot of aspects of the gameplay. Like I like the hacking. I really yeah. enjoy mm. like that's my approach is like a stealth kind of hacking build that I've been yeah, using. Yeah, you probably are enjoying what I'm doing right now. So I have like <laughs> I have like a cyber deck with like six slots. Mm. I have like contagion, I have a uh, short circuit. I have like a whole bunch of quick hacks that work really well. Yeah, um, nice. yeah, and then on top of that, like the technical ability, to, like open specific doors and stuff. Mm. And, get... and there's so... real depth in this. I, I want to point out that this game passes the patented Savi uh, sadomasochistic uh, test. I'm playing this on very hard. It's yeah. really fun. 
So I I've am, been playing this on normal, and I'm shocked at how reasonable it is. It's yeah, actually quite so, doable for a small child who's not used to controllers. I'm I'm definitely <laughs> like I I definitely have a much slower approach to the gameplay mm -hmm. because it's constantly like casing a, a mission location, using software to like get the cameras and find this, and then turning it mm. off when I know the layout of everything. Yeah, so I've been really liking the approach to it, and I feel like the stealth is really good. You know, yes, I like the, the, to take the stealth approach, and like, so I have reboot optics on my cyber deck, so like, I can like blind one guy over there. He's confused for a second. I can distract another enemy and sneak up on the guy that I'm trying to get. Yeah, so and I really then like, later on you can take their turrets and turn them against them. Yeah, so I have that too, like that. Yeah. and like I have just all sorts of different quick hacks that I really like, and I like how adaptable the gameplay is to that because you can go in just guns blazing too. Absolutely. Yeah. You, know? you can and, and wait. You can distract them and send them over to an explosive. Yeah, like I just blew that guy's up. head up. That was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and all the guns Skippy feel yet? good. I have the not sniper rifles Skippy. feel good. Okay. The pistols feel good. I haven't found Skippy mm -hmm. yet. Um, but they play so differently depending on whether they're tech, power, yes. uh, whatever the third mm. thing is. The smart um, pistol is freaking fun. Your bullets go around corners. As long as you can see the person a little bit, They'll find mm -hmm. their way. It's and it really also, hilarious. like, the way that they work is almost like micro-missiles. So all sorts yeah. of things come into play with the with that gun, such as, like, which angle are you firing from? What distance is it? Like, how is it going to arc at them? Right. Yeah. So I have, um, I use Skippy as, like, my main weapon when I, like, get caught. Um, and then I have, like, the, the sniper rifle that Pan Am gives you. Mm -hmm. And for melee, I have the mono wire because I found a legendary mono wire in my travels. Mm. Yes, that I really I enjoy. Also. That sounds brutal. Yeah, uh, and I have a gold-plated baseball bat that. <laughs> oh my god, that's that funny. I got from a, a member of, of course. Of Johnny you can see me band. being the ultimate weeb <laughs> and running around with my goddamn samurai sword, and it's pretty satisfying. The um, the nuttiest thing about the sword is how well it actually works with the stealth. To me, like. Mm -hmm. If you go and you get someone, right, and, like, you get the power weapon on them and you actually one-shot them, you basically get the animation of, like, bam, off with your head, and then, like, you're still perfectly stealth if no one saw you, which means now you got to grab the body, dump it in a thing, et cetera, et cetera. Like, they, they're taking lessons from, like, Metal Gear. Of course I like this. Yeah. Yeah, and I gotta say, as far as power fantasies go, I mean, that's obviously what this is, but this is the most unequal world I have ever seen in video <laughs> game form. And it takes a lot to be able to fight the way things always go in this universe, right? Yeah. Uh, the little guy tends to lose. That's just how it works. Uh, and you can join a gang, but chances are you'll die. You can join a corporation, but there's still a chance you'll die. There's no easy way out. And there's not supposed to be. That's by design. Right. The corpos have you where they want you. They literally control the government. And because they've made the cyberware in your body, to some extent, it feels like they control you all the time. Mm. Medical care is extremely expensive in this world. You know, it's it's a dark place to live in. So when you have all these cool tricks that you can do and as you climb your way up you know your body becomes more cybernetic and you get cooler weapons that do crazy stuff you didn't expect um you definitely do have this feeling that maybe you can fight back but maybe you're the only one does the power call seem um gradual or are you making like really big jumps from level to level it like, feels gradual, gradual. because yeah, of good. the the when you add in this screen here when you're adding your attributes which i'm literally doing jumps, because of i want to do that mine right now right. <laughs> so the jump from this screen the talent tree kind of screen but this stat screen the jumps yeah. are pretty small from level to level okay yeah and there's also the lots of different levels that make up your that level. changes things more but it's still yeah. a very gradual pace the same way with the damage on the weapons, the damage of the skills, like the it's a gradual pace. Yeah. yeah. And so like uh, the it's important to point out like the details here design wise, you have your level and you have your street cred and those things are the biggest 
uh, gatekeepers in the game of content and other things. There's equipment right. you can pick up that if you're not the right level, you cannot use it. But in terms of your actual power, that comes from your attributes and it comes from your skills. You get skill mm. points by just doing shit. Uh, you get levels in that skill, which will which will scale up the things you've unlocked in that skill tree. You get skill points by, I think, leveling up. But like all these things are kind of distinct. You get general points for just playing the game, and then you put them where you want. And then you also okay. get them even more exacerbated by doing the thing over and over again. It's, it's kind actually of pretty Skyrim, well. Skyrim, right? right? Yes. Where yeah. you, it's a good when you use when you when you like actually lockpick something, you gain yeah. skill and lockpicking. So it's very much Skyrim in that way. And, and it also has the was... chosen kind of dialogue options. Like if you're very technical and you have a tech heavy uh, build, you can opt for dialogue options that will unlock, you know, like from a technical standpoint or from a sneaky standpoint right. or you from can, a cool standpoint. You like, can geek out with the lady who programs brain dances for yeah. a while and she respects you a little more for it. Uh, if you have a corpo background and you're speaking to somebody who currently is or was employed by the Arasaka Corporation, it's a major player in this game, then you can prove that you understand office politics and they respect mm. you a little more. Or you can make deals that you otherwise wouldn't be able to, to make. Right. Each, each background has its own uh, benefits. And I like that... Um that those are there but they're like they're, they're so strewn about miscellaneously and randomly that they're mostly just for like role-playing purposes but the one that i think is is brilliant the way is the way that they're using the attributes to gate certain actions and the way that that scales up over time like at the most basic level when you start the game if you didn't invest in your body you literally can't carjack anyone but if you increase it by one point i think up to four now you can carjack people Right. basic cars but then eventually you're going to be dealing with some armored bullshit and you'll probably need like 20 body to rip the door off yeah so i've been lucky enough to have like stats in body from like just being like oh well i need to be able to take some damage to the point where like there are certain doors and stuff that i'll just rip open to get to where i'm going and use to my satisfying. advantage right so like i have the ability to open technical doors and i also have the ability to just rip open some doors yeah Mm -hmm. So it really opens up your pathways into like mm -hmm. how you want to approach a level. And yeah. sometimes the good rewards are through those optional doors. There's yes. not going to be anything from a plot standpoint that you wouldn't want to miss, but man, maybe that cool cyberware or that awesome gun is like, just I think the door. first time I had regret about it was, uh, do you remember the mission where you're rescuing Saul? Mm -hmm. And there's a door up there that you can go through if you have a high enough skill, I think in technical. Mm. Yep. And I didn't. And I was like, God damn, I stealth all the way through this thing. And now I got to go back through these people with a guy. And I like right? how that, even that feeds back into the gameplay because there's, are there three types of guns or two? Power, tech, and I feel like I'm missing something? Smart. Smart. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have any smart yet because I don't have a smart link. But with tech, you can shoot through walls like all of them they're all rail guns basically yeah and if you charge yeah. them up fully that thing's going to go straight through every bit of cover right. hit whatever you're pointing at headshots yep. etc so that's very safe and then power guns your revolver ocelot you can shoot around corners yeah you i kind of feel them. like the smart control for your gun and then there's a double jump that you can get from as a leg yes, modification. Yes, you can get a double jump. I don't have and it yet, but I would I like highly it. recommend those two, even though they are expensive, they are worth every penny. It's I, I, I focus so heavily on trying to get as much RAM into my cyber deck as possible. Yeah, I've been I was saving like, up for like the most expensive possible cyber yeah. deck. <laughs> so I've been like, I've been running into this issue where I'm like, I don't have enough RAM to do all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my first problem. And now I, I'm like, well, I need some traversal mechanisms now. Yeah. Too. And I, I do like that you can take the cyber deck and instead put in something that does purely awesome physical attributes so that That's your cool. melee combat is super powered, that but makes you're sense. not a hacker at all. Nice. If you want to go that way, you can. Do you start with um, characteristics of your life path or every year a blank slate? Well, you have some points that you can allocate early in the game. So and you're like, definitely got specific a, here's, to the life yeah, path. Yeah, here's like 10 points to play yeah, with, yeah. right? No, no, no yeah. I'm just saying, but is your, it your background to your life and, no. and your that, points that are independent. Role playing. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. You have, okay. you have no skill points, but you have these attribute points and you have a background. That's what you Exactly. Start. 
cool. you, you, it's made no decisions about like how you're going to improve in those skills, but you have all of them. Right. And, but you did make attribute decisions, but because like I said, um, the decision is fairly tame at the beginning, I would say, um, you'll learn like literally right there in the middle of that mission, I encountered a mine that I couldn't disarm. It just so happened I just leveled up and I threw the point at the mine and now I got it. And that's li that's like intentional. That's good level design. Yeah. They, they intentionally yeah. put the range at the beginning so that it's just enough to be worth it. And also like it can just be low enough to like you run into some stuff and you're like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah, the, the gating uh, and that, that path feels good. Um, all the, pretty much all the way to the end. You find things that require six points, eight points, 10 points, 12 points. I think the highest is 20 points that I've ever seen. Uh, and that's of, hard to get to. But. One of the best things I've noticed is like, you can hack an enemy location pretty early on mm. and deactivate all the security. But the moment you're not realizing what's going on there and you're like, well, I need to use a camera to go see. If you hack that camera now, it turns back on. So you have to go back in and reset it. So if you turn anything back on after you've turned off security, you can essentially shoot yourself in the foot. Right, because- Because the, the camera will spot you. And because the implication is that any place that's worth going into has a net runner somewhere yes. that when you do a hack, they will have some knowledge of where you are. And then all the goons come rushing in. And then even more on top of that is the Netrunner can find you too and kind of hack your location out of you. Exactly. So you'll have this little bar filling up at the bottom of your screen as the Netrunner tries to locate you. And once they locate you, they'll hack you and, and they'll send goons to you. And if it's a good runner, they'll literally like try to, I just dropped something. They'll literally just try to like hit you with enough ice to give you fire damage for the next 10 seconds or something yeah. like that. They overheat your implants. That's yes. one of their attacks. Yeah. Cool. I, okay. So I just have another, can you three sort of go over sort of like the premise of, I guess, your life path and how you start? Just, just, you know, we don't have to go too crazy. Just be like, okay. <laughs> it basically gives you... you know, man, an intro okay. yeah like i can do street kid yeah okay. do yours. go for it um so basically the street kid intro is you start in a bar and this guy you're essentially the bartender is in debt to some fixer yeah so you go in to go fix it because it's essentially extortion and sure. you you know you go in to fix it you save this uh you save this girl who's getting like ripped up by like a body shop kind of thing like a chop shop but for implants and organs you save her and uh you essentially make your way through the ranks of being like a good mercenary essentially oh okay so you know? that's basically so it's like you start with like yeah. start you start as just like this urchin on the street and work your way up yeah, yeah. by um, the way there is a way to end up in that chop shop if you choose poorly in this game that's fun you Ooh. can wake up you can wake up in that bath going oh my god what what's what's gone what's gone wrong what am i missing that's fine. Um, an arm a leg <laughs> yeah who knows right a silver hand. um so the corpo rat is part of the security personnel at arasaka, at arasaka at arasaka right and her boss is uh dealing with a power struggle and he's not the brightest guy in the world so his clever plan is to off his superior and you are sent to go and, and do this. And there's really no way to win. You missed the you part know? where we watch him murder everyone in some kind of international council. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That happens. Yeah. The, this guy really only, he's like the hammer and everything's a nail to him. Mm. So when an international negotiation goes wrong, he, he just kills all the other negotiators. Yeah. Wow. Like, how that works uh yeah. does that ending does that montage into like the opening of the story yes it does all of them, Yours, yeah. Yeah. All, of, okay. all of them do in yeah. in the end you always end up on the street and in the corpus case no matter what she does her boss is such an idiot that she, she she's gonna lose her job mm. and along with it she loses all her cool arasaka implants and she's on the street with no money. And that's when some dude named Jackie comes, picks her up, and they become best of buds. Oh, yeah. It should be noted that in the street kid, you don't know Jackie from the oh. beginning. You actually run into each other on the same job. 
Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and he's he's trying to steal. Oh, it's a it's stealing a car, not the uh, okay, not the medical thing I was thinking of. Yeah, that's the Go second back. thing you do. Yes. Uh -huh. So it's it's um you're both stealing this really expensive car, and as you get in the car to start it, the door opens and Jackie's there pointing a gun to your head, and then the cops show up. And that's how, like, you guys become friends because you talk your way out of the situation with the cops and then they just dump you on the street. Talk together. your way out? I'm confused. They don't shoot first? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the Nomad setup is pretty fast and straightforward. You uh, spawn in, so to speak, and you're in a garage. Your car is a little bit fucked up and you're trying to get it fixed because you got to make your way to Night City. Um, you deal with a cop. He's a local sheriff. He's kind of a butthole, but he doesn't give you any serious trouble. You just drive away. You use a radio to have a communication with some dude who's just like, hey, you should have just played nice with the tribe and you'd still have a family, I guess, but now you don't. Bye. Here's the location of the guy that you want wow. for that, that you're going to do the last job that you're going to do or whatever, right? Turns out that person's Jackie Wells and you meet, you become uh, best buds within two minutes and then you drive off to cross the border and obviously <laughs> that's well directed uh no seriously it is it's uh it's a border crossing that's very scary you bribe someone if you choose to doesn't matter if you do because he will either take that money or not and then because he the the interrogator figured out that you don't have a nomad clan backing you yeah uh, he blows the whistle and you have a armed chase uh, which you escape from, and then Jackie's like, we did it, we're in Night City. And you're just like, cool, give me my money. And he goes, I don't have it right now. And it's just like, why don't you have my money? And he goes, well, to be honest, I never planned on paying you in the first place, but you seem pretty cool, so now we're best friends. And then she's just, <laughs> and, and then your character's just like, I guess. But, you but did you check the to montage. See, did you check to see what you were smuggling? Oh, yes. Uh, it turned out that you were smuggling an extinct species known as an iguana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of exp extinct species in this world. I, I want to talk about like the world itself for a minute. Um, there's a reason why your nomad, which is basically rural lower class, or street kid, which is urban lower class, or your corpo, which is the only available upper class, uh, because that's temporary pretty much upper class. that's that's pretty much the same temporary. temporary. Yeah. When you get fired, yeah. you get fired. Yeah, it's no <laughs> joke. Yes, but seriously, uh, inequality is so bad in this world. The environment is a complete mess. It's literally a wasteland outside the the city. It's 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 California. It's, well, I think like the interesting thing to take away from that yeah. is like you'll go into people's apartments and just kind of see like the hot mess that it is. Mm -hmm. sure. And then they have like the the really cheap like food places and and all the the food items are like this fake like synth beef yeah like and they talk about it's stuff. made out yeah. of crickets or earthworms or something yeah like it's that. interesting to see like how like far in like the fake coffee and fake foods and yeah it's like, only they're only made machine stuff they're only made with uh, pure E. coli they yeah. don't <laughs> right they well don't and that's part of it is synthetic shit no chemicals yeah they're they're definitely talking about uh, what happens when corporations basically run the government? So if they don't want to be regulated, they don't have to be anymore. Right. So things like the cyberware you implant could just kill you after a while. Yeah. And who's going to stop it? Eh. Right. And yeah. like even when you go to things like Ripper Docs to get implants, it's just like these really seedy mm -hmm. doctor's offices you know, that like, you're just like, why would anyone go here for anything? It feels like a tattoo parlor. Except yeah. you're, you're it, having surgery. It yeah. feels like it feels like you have a 50% chance of them knocking you unconscious, stealing your liver and throwing you in a river. Well, it's like a 33% chance of that or a 33% chance of like your implant exploding in your body. That too. And then short circuiting your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, they, and they talk about this phenomenon, First cyber problem. psychosis, where your brain just can't handle all this mechanical interface yeah, basically like going rejection on. of like a biological organ right. not just that though, like the, the effect that it can have on your psychology if you become too cyber too fast yeah there was a quest where that i had where it was literally like 
hey, there's a cyber psycho who is probably belongs to the Maelstrom gang and like he did something bad, go figure out what's going on. And you find this guy, he's not a Maelstrom, he's actually a Valentino who was like thinking about switching to the uh, Maelstrom kind of, and you figure this out only by scanning stuff and reading stuff. Uh, right. All you really need to do is kill him to end a quest. Um, but like the reason that he did that is probably cyberpsychosis but in part it's because the maelstrom installed so much stuff into him so fast and he had problems with a girl right. that he lamented that he loved her and she didn't return his calls so it's funny you so say that because nuts. i ran into a cyber psycho uh like the first cyber psycho i ran into mm -hmm. he again you have to scan the environment to see what it is and the reason for his cyber psychosis is he used to work for like a paramilitary organization and they fired him. And when he got fired, he lost his trauma team uh, like plan, essentially. And he couldn't yeah. get the medication he needed to drive off the cyber psychosis. So he was yeah. trying to get it from like off the street. And it was just too expensive. He couldn't afford it. Yeah. And eventually he succumbed to cyber psychosis. Right. And you have the sort of like veterans issues that you would expect to see somebody coming back from a war and being traumatized. But maybe they've also ingested terrible mm -hmm. chemicals mm -hmm. they've basically committed a sort of get genocide and can't live with themselves like so there's a whole series of subquests where your goal is to incapacitate but not kill people with cyber psychosis so they can be studied in mm. hopes that there can be some kind of cure nice. uh, and i think that's a great little that's kind of one of the things i did is like as far as taking talents is i took a talent that uh, headshots with guns won't kill anybody. It just huh. knocks them unconscious. That's a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was so, like, I want to kind of minimize casualties. Yeah, I carry three. I carry three melee weapons at all time. My katana for when things need to die. <laughs> uh, a club for when things don't need to die, and a knife for when I need to throw a knife at someone and make it die. <laughs> I just have Skippy. <laughs> and he's that's, programmed to take headshots. Nothing nice. wrong with Skippy. Um, so it's like it kind of works with some like uh, synergy there, you know, because he's automated yeah, for headshots yeah, yeah, and the headshots yeah. will bang, knock bang, people bang, unconscious. Bang. Yes. And then if I'm feeling kind of like vindictive because like a character did something I didn't agree with, I can always shoot them all while they're like unconscious and it kills them. Yep. Right. I've, I've had people, one of the things I like about this game is that most of the time when you kill someone, they might not actually be dead. They'll just be incapacitated and they'll just be yeah. rolling around on the floor a lot. Mm -hmm. It's the classic, like, I'm out of the combat, I'm, I'm a casualty, but I'm not dead. And, and that kind of does give you a player choice in a way where it's like, who is this person? Why do I want to kill them? What do I want to do? And I've done a lot of fun things with that like take the person throw them in a trunk drive them to the river but don't throw them in a river river lose track of what i was doing and then just leave <laughs> them in the trunk oh no someone's gonna <laughs> think it's suspicious and figure out what to do with him not me wow. like oh, there's all these there's all these moments where i'm just like all right how do i not kill this guy and i was like there's a bounty on him maybe i can go find some cops and just like drop him in front of them and see what happens and then i lost interest but like there's <laughs> There's there's these there's these ways that like you can not be a total piece of shit in this game and I really yeah. do appreciate that um, because that does matter to me actually. Yeah, um, I kind of want to skip a little bit and I'm gonna share my screen uh, to to share an image that that we got. Late game <laughs> stuff, potential spoilers. Oh, okay. That's well, this is a, a screenshot I took. Oh, nice. uh, really nice. I this is probably about five minutes uh after the like intro start of the story mission with where where jackie you know <laughs> dies and i walked out onto a street and i just started walking down the street to kind of take in the atmosphere yep. and i saw this magazine rack and i was like what's on that magazine rack mm. and this right mm. in my face that's awesome the <laughs> yeah yeah so how um Gender and sexuality works in this game. Boy, you could do a whole podcast just about that, man. For mm. shizzle. For sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, just start with character creation. Your voice is independent from your body. Your genitals are independent from everything else. You can yeah, just have underwear. Three dimensions. You could just have underwear, and we don't know what's going on under there, if that's what yeah. you prefer. Yeah, well, three dimensions with are masculine, masculine or feminine <laughs> body. Uh, masculine or feminine voice, which determines your pronouns, and do you want penis A, penis B, or a vagina? Or neither. Penis B. Or, or, or none of those. 
if you find penis B. It's a big B. Penis B. Little P. <laughs> no, the, no, the it's two styles and of uncircumcised. Penis. If Is you it? choose yes. a penis, then you have a whole slider for your size. Yes. Uh, Apparently, see, there was I a glitch vagina, going around. So. <laughs> there was a glitch going around where the penises would stick out and you just yes. walk around with a boner or something. Yeah, Look, I think it, they have corrected that open. issue. I, I, okay. never, I never saw a boner in this game. They just flop around a lot, as best I can tell. Um, okay. And every time um, I go to the menu and I like switch pants, I think it's funny how they put the little <laughs> glitch effect, right? Because like the glitch effect almost feels like it's obscuring it enough to make it like an open question. But you can also <laughs> just unequip your pants and run around naked. You can, yes. Uh, oh. So th there is a way to get a fuck the police shirt in this game. Beautiful. From from plot. From plot happening. From plot, nice. <laughs> and then it puts you in that shirt and nothing else. Oh, <laughs> so that's so kind of a special thing. You know, after the first like yeah. bender and night of Johnny yeah. that, that V goes through, yeah. and the, you wake up naked. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like... V has no clothes on, and if you don't go into the inventory and like fix that, you're walking out into the world with no clothes and, on. And no one seems to really care. It's yeah, not, uh, not of interest. Well, there's people in the street that just ex just have short shorts on. Yeah, that's you true. Know? Ooh, wear short short. And and, so. and it's interesting because like they've actually I can't figure out what this game's politics are other than fuck corporations, which obviously good job. But like sure. the the thing that I think is interesting about like what they're doing is this truly is an open world they're trying to consider like everything from the perspective of what it's like to actually exist in that world and right. so just a generation of pedestrians is an algorithm that has politics in it because of course it does because there's no such thing as like a reasonable default and so for example in the streets everyone you can it looks like they fall into a gender more or less but right. then in certain places like a gay bar have fun because you're going to see yeah. a masculine voice with a feminine body and vice versa and every combination therein. And I think that that's actually like really, really well considered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would say overall, I kind of like, it, it feels like progress anyway, that they've done that. I know there are trans people who wish they'd just gone that one step further and allowed people to choose their pronouns in addition to everything else. Right. And I hope that they do that. That's a patch that they could do that I know isn't going to be their top priority right now, but it seems very doable. Maybe, but I, on some level, I think that it's a fair take to say that you're, the entire world is going to base what they call you off of something, and it's not going to be some bit of data that you put on the metadata of the profile, blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> it's going to be your voice or your face or your dick. And, and honestly, we all know that's not fair, but like, guess what? This world sucks. <laughs> Like the cyberpunk yeah. universe is not a happy place to be. And and yeah. I'm not trying to like erase that stuff. I'm just saying like, it's a fair take to just be like, look, man, the politics of this is complicated and people are going to do awful things to you. Yeah. So I will, I will say, so this, this genre of cyberpunk has a little bit, and, and this game in particular has a little Grand Theft Auto in it. It's a little has uh, of noir movies or, or, there would be black and white detective movies if you can imagine the femme fatale that walks in the door with a job and she's not being entirely honest about it and yeah <laughs> and the sexual tension is thick in the air like that whole <laughs> that whole genre you can feel that being a part of of cyberpunk so, like, and so they're gonna struggle with traditional gender roles and sexuality to some extent because of their source material so to like kind of segue from that is like there are these like romance options you can choose within the game and like one of those options is pan am right mm -hmm. and i'm playing a female v so yes. um like you pick the romance options because like they're there and then like with pan am she's constantly like mm, it's not really my cup of tea which I kind of found pretty interesting because that means there are other options she's out not, there. She's not a player sexual, you mean? Well, yes. she is for male Vs, uh, not right. for female Vs. Uh, yes. But she has yes. like, there are certain characters that you can romance that have preferences. Right. Yes, definitely. There are, there are characters that do and there are characters that don't, right. uh, clearly. One of the ones I've, that don't is your local uh, street sex worker, which I've got to say, I was pretty cool with it. 
There's only one girl and one boy sex worker that you can actually oh, yeah? get to do th this stuff with you. <laughs> like, oh, the stuff. the cutscenes are like kind of tastefully edited. Like, they're, it feels they're more like out a... there, but you can't proposition them for whatever yeah. reason. They're not on the street. They'll actually be, I'm not working right now. It feels like a trailer. <laughs> it feels like a trailer for like your favorite <laughs> stereotypical pornography. Like, yeah. and then, and then like, uh, it, it's not like you get to do anything awful to them. Like you, you, you paid them, you did the thing. Right. And so then it, you can pay them again if you want. It teleports you like to their apartment. You have your your one night stand and then it teleports you back to where you were. Mm -hmm. So yep. like- Job done. Hope yeah, you it's like, your here's the thing you paid for. You it's got your exactly services. As Congratulations on as your you thought it was going to be. Exactly. <laughs> and, and like- that's that's the way to portray it. But what I also yeah. think is very interesting on that same beat is the entire gang of the mocks are probably going to be my best friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about them a little bit. Uh, so their headquarters is Lizzie's Bar, and uh, the original Lizzie uh, got in a fight trying to defend one of her prostitutes from a gang boss. And she died. Was it Valentino's? They, I can't remember if they said. I don't recall. Okay. And almost, it doesn't matter. Some dude who got a little too attached to a girl and wanted to beat her up a little bit because she wasn't saying what he wanted to hear. Uh, and oh, Lizzie okay. went down, but the rest of the women decided to organize and keep the place going. And eventually they turned into a gang of very attractive, mostly women. Mm. Right? They wear so, short shorts and they have a baseball bat. And you do not fuck with them. Are they Harley Quinn? <laughs> yes. Yes, all of them. All of them collectively. collectively. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I kind of love the mocks that, and that they exist and that they're they're kind of trying to advocate for uh, the underprivileged women that end up in the kind of jobs that they don't have as much autonomy as they And boys, don't forget like. the boy toys. Yes. The boy toys are there too. Boy dolls are um, real. And one of the places you run across is a place called Clouds, where um, people have cyberware installed that connects them to an artificial intelligence computer that knows a lot about the clients. Right. And it knows what the clients want, and it takes over these people's brains and attempts to deliver that with bodies that they then call dolls. So, so these people mm, stop being themselves and they start being whatever the computer decides they will be during that. Yeah. Time. So there's a mission that actually has so you encounter house. that. Yes, it's dollhouse. It's, it's super off-putting. What mission? Because sorry? there's a mission that has you like uh, trying to get information from a doll. Okay. Um, and you have to like speak to the person, but like you go into the mission and they start talking to you and like they draw you in with like this kind of conversational path that V wants and you choose the options but then like there's a break where you use the safe word and yes. it stops that and then the program turns off and the person is just like what the hell are you doing that's not how this works and then like you start talking to them and it's like this weird kind of break to the whole thing and it's just yeah. really really off-putting they clearly find it super creepy to be talking to a client in person yeah right they don't sure. want that yeah. that's a sign that something has gone wrong. i did not consent to you like casually snapping me out of my hey yeah basically. of like the job i'm trying yeah. to do here yeah like i was oh, trying wow. to sleep <laughs> yeah that's so, the deal is that you don't talk to the real me yeah right mm. and then like i remember them snapping out of it and like starting to talk and i was like wow that that's a little uncomfortable it definitely feels like a consent issue. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're you're trying to help them in a way. I mean, but then again, Not it's if like they don't want your help. That's the job. <laughs> they that's have, the problem, right? Like that's so, their, their how do you, job is to how do you do ethically that. transcend someone's consent? Yeah. Without being a butthole, right? Like yeah, yeah. Well, it, I mean, it if raises culture... questions about what is what is consent really? Mm, is it I really mean, possible it... to give consent? for your body to do anything you don't know what it will be sure uh i mean you can also say like if they're making decisions to be this then if that's the culture of that world you know hey uh these are people who choose to be dolls who is it well then what, the, the way that sure. world puts people down the question becomes do they have a choice mm -hmm. or right. are they just trying to survive yeah i mean the the 
the whole genre and this game included does a good job of like asking this question of like individual versus collective yeah and like what is the individual good what is the collective good you can't avoid that question in a post-capitalist nightmare of 2077 but like uh it's it's really uh, late capitalist is actually the correct term. It's it's really like a tricky thing to navigate, and it's good that this pushes that question because I think it's one of the failings of a lot of libertarian bullshit like Red Dead Redemption Two. But like that's uh, it, it's an interesting thing to play around with. Um, right. I, if if no one minds, I'd like to kind of pivot to what the first person perspective does because I think it does a lot. This game, if you never die is almost the God of War of first person games because it chooses to never cut away. And what mm -hmm. that does for your experience is fucking dope. The car chase with uh, Takeshi, I think is his name, or no, Takamura. Takamura. Um, the car chase with him after you do the thing is pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure you can't die because like, I did a lot of very, very bad shooting and yes, just die. me too, in that same one. But like, fuck if I knew if I if it mattered. I was just trying to shoot the scary looking things. It like, pulls you into the experience in a way. Like yeah. we were talking about before with like the conversational options where you sit down next to somebody at a table. What a creative choice. Like, Yeah, and it really keeps you immersed by not just having you being like, if you're a jittery gamer, just running back and forth around them, right? Like looking yeah, for yeah. stuff while they're talking. Yeah, sure. you know? and me and personally. I I, I don't think it's too much to say that Keanu Reeves is, is in your head. Nobody else sees him but you. Uh, and that's yes. by design part of the game. And he's a lovely part of the game because you're struggling with whether to talk to him or talk to the person you're supposed to be talking to and how much do you value his opinion. And it's also so important from the plot perspective because here's a guy who's supposed to be dead 50 years ago. And he's right. talking to you, and he's a very convincing personality. So what does that mean that 50 years later, there's this guy yeah. that could talk? And what does that mean from the perspective of a corporation where the board of – now does the board yeah. of directors live forever? Without, Is that what happens now? Without getting too spoilerific, <laughs> the best thing that – that my, my best read on this 10 hours in is that – they successfully commodified Keanu Reeves, which is hilarious because you see all these tidbits about in the world about how people do brain dances to literally relive some of his shows. So, right. I, that, so that's basically my take is just like, oh, you got captured and now they commodified everything in your fucking brain. Well, that's but, how this starts is that basically somebody's got them on a chip and they want to sell them. Yeah, and so you're gonna is, steal him. So this is Identity Crisis, the game, which I think is and, probably one of the best setups I've ever seen, and because I already started the game on this page by becoming a masculine-bodied, feminine-voiced person with a vagina. Like that's a funny to me, like that I had the option, but it's also impressive that they actually like make it work because they, in a they take it seriously this is not played yeah. for jokes and i know? think one of my favorite things about him being in your head is there are moments that are not story specific and just kind of impartial to add to the overall game itself where he shows up mm. and he'll just be like leaning against a window yeah. or like the opposite side of the elevator so uh -huh. it's like it kind of feels more like he's there not just yeah. showing up when it's story important and he represents, drive it forward. he represents some kind of cutting edge anti-corporatism from like 2030, I think. Yeah. And like, that's a good archetype to just have floating around in your head because he really like makes you feel like you're being an asshole if you're too simplistic about almost anything right. because yeah. he's a piece of shit in a hundred different ways. And like, I started off the game having the dysphoria of like, my character has a beard, so they look like me, but they don't sound like me because I don't like the way that the masculine voice sounds. So everyone uses the word she around me. And whenever I am in the thing and I switch my pants, I don't see a pe Like there's so many ways that I'm just fucking with my own brain by playing this. And But it, but it fits because now I have the manliest goddamn man in all of man <laughs> speaking in my ear about like using the F-bomb every two seconds, just like I do. And I'm like, you simplistic fuck. Like, that's actually my reaction to a lot of what I've seen of him so far. Yeah. And that's just yeah. fun. But on the other hand, too, like, V grew up in this world, right? 
And Johnny Silverhand is from far enough ago and was old enough to remember when it at least wasn't nearly so bad, when corporations hadn't captured governments and started wars with one another. It hadn't reached that point when he was alive. Yeah, he could term. see it coming, and that's part of why he got so damn cynical and angry. Mm -hmm. And so he's able to look at the world around you and go, God, look how even worse this is right yeah. even in my worst <laughs> dreams i didn't think it would get this yeah. bad there's a way that he is like you the player and what's mm -hmm. happening is he's telling you like this can get so much worse than it was in my world and like therefore yeah. the actions that he took which are questionable start to feel less questionable which is interesting storytelling um i think that part of what he does is like with that whole identity crisis type thing is like this game is begging you g genuinely begging you to find a better solution i think mm -hmm. because this world sucks and i think the interesting thing is there's a point where you'll have a conversation with him and it's kind of like he's changing his mind because he's being influenced by v but it's also going the opposite direction too like him invading v's mind is also like changing v right to the extent of like yeah. he affects your decision making and by process you affect his decision making that's like kind of how these minds are merging in the proto like prototype tech level mm -hmm. you know yeah. even even early on when he changes his mind on what he's trying to do you know yeah it's yeah. a relationship that's what it is yeah yeah so um i guess one other thing i wanted to talk about is kind of how this game handles race if we're good with discussing Johnny. Um, so one thing that's cool is they've clearly gone to a lot of trouble to use advisors who are natives in various different languages and cultures. So they're not just going with the most obvious word-to-word -word translation from English to Spanish or Japanese or whatever, but they're using the sort of street slang that could be imagined in the future the same way they use words like chum and right. gonk. The they way that have... they translate certain Spanish phrases don't translate others. Mm -hmm. It really well done actually and give credit where that where that's due. Uh, at the same time I've seen a lot of criticisms of how they handled the Arasaka uh, storyline in particular. So you've got a Japanese family and again you've got those cyberpunk roots where there, this came from an era where it felt like the United States manufacturing base was shrinking while it was growing in Japan at the time and then later China and other places, Korea. But the sense that um, they were going to take over the world and leave us all, all the rest of us impoverished. So that mm -hmm. sort of anxiety was expressed in cyberpunk by kind of making these inscrutable, mysterious Japanese families like the bad guys. Effectively, yeah. in sort of the same simplistic way that Russian uh, military guys would be the bad guys, right. or uh, some Middle Eastern terrorist group would just be the bad guys, and it's sure. almost too too easy and too simplistic. Sure. But I actually see a little more depth in the Arasaka family. Uh, you can pick up a random um, one of those random text files you pick up in the world that talks the about the shards the the three branches or the three um the three types of birds mm. uh, that you see in their culture and the arasaka logo actually looks like a tree with three major uh branches and it mm. talks about the pheasant or the traditionalist bird and the hawk or the aggressive and militant bird and the dove or the empathetic and peaceful bird right. and how these three are all a necessary part of the culture. And then they have uh, the children of the Arasaka family, your Nobu uh, is clearly the hawk, the son of the family. And you've got Hanako, who's clearly the pheasant. She's all about preserving the family tradition. Right. And uh, there's a, the, another daughter that I haven't met yet. Um, and I'm like, is that the DLC? I don't know what's going on. With that. Where, where's the dove? I don't know. But um, there's definitely this sense that um, part of the reason you have an opening in this world is there an, an actual power struggle at the very top of the Arasaka Empire, which effectively owns Night City. Mm -hmm. This is their city. And if they can't decide who's in charge and you have some leverage, maybe that changes things. 
Mm. Yeah, it's definitely like simplicity is the is the death of of nuance, obviously. And so when yeah. people just go like they made Asian man bad, is just like you know Keanu Reeves is a hero, and he's like in more Asian movies than Asians, right? I'm kidding, but <laughs> but like he's also Asian, so yeah, exactly. I mean. He's he's Asian. He's from <laughs> Beirut. He's yeah. from Beirut, a region that people would usually say that that's that's where the terrorists come from, and so like that plays into his character in an interesting way for Americans. Mm-hmm. And so like mm-hmm. there's all these ways in which they're not being stupid about casting. They like they know that this is a white man who's actually Asian. They know that like you don't tell a story by just going these people are bad you explore them right and i think they actually and again it depends as a corporate my character is keyed in a little more to the arasaka world and right. is aware that they're not a single monolithic empire of course as they as they like to portray themselves to the outside world because to admit there's an internal struggle is to show vulnerability to your competitors yeah right right so, so the way the way like it's all introduced to like a street kid background or like what you know it's like you would look at arasaka as like the ivory tower right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. it's the most important of the corporations because it's named so frequently Mm -hmm. and has this kind of like bad guy flair to it because they're the bad guys right right i actually want to share the last uh video that we real quick i'll share that the nomad arasaka they're the people that you're ripping off yeah yeah. That's pretty much it. And then I like while you share that, like uh, in sociology, you learn that a corporation is not a person. You learn that a corporation is not the collection of people. You learn that a corporation is not merely every single person who's ever worked for it, but instead it's a process and it's a way of organizing people, the process and procedures to do shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So what I'm, um, ooh, what happened to my video? Sorry. What I'm trying to show here is you can actually see the Arasaka logo at the end of this drive. You're about to walk into the home of one of member of the Arasaka family. Um, you are not welcome there, so the fight's going to break out in a little while. But uh, I just want you to see like how different this is from the grubby <laughs> cyberpunk of the street that you deal with most of the time. Um, yeah, and by by this point in the game, your implant is acting up. So when you see the screen do these weird fuzzy horizontal lines, um, that is the tension between you and Johnny Silverhand. He doesn't necessarily want to do what you want to do. Mm. Mm. He probably and, wants to nuke it. <laughs> but, yeah, he would love to do nothing more than just destroy this entire place. You know, just old-fashioned rock and roll style. Is that the vibe he's giving off from the beginning? <laughs> well, that was a Johnny Silverhand moment right there. <laughs> right. He'd yeah. Smash that dude. Uh, for sure. So that's this is part of the fun of the um, game is is kind of dealing with this you know situation where Johnny gets more and more, uh, I guess, in entitled, control. entitled maybe in some mm. ways. He's like, look, you know, you're getting deeper and deeper into this shit that mm. I'm. I'm the yeah. expert on from back in the day, and I know what we should do. You know, I, yeah. I tried to I tried to finish the job, right? And now I got a chance. Don't screw it up. And there's a there's a I I'm not I don't know what happens in this game. I suspect that like part of the choices that they give you towards the end is like, are you going to delete Johnny Silverhand or not? Like, are, are you going to be, are you going to like assert yourself or are you going to let him take over or are you going to want to like, just let it happen or are you going to let it merge so that there's like both of you at all times? Those are the dimensions that I think they're going to be fucking around with because that's a choice between being some if asshole from 2033. Johnny Silverhand, would you? Right. <laughs> Uh, so and, and that's interesting because he's a rocker boy right like that's what they call him in the world and and that's there's this looming question about like should he die right should he be allowed to die mm. mm-hmm. yeah and should anyone be allowed to die and if they don't what's to keep a single person from amassing infinite power over time mm. ah good point yeah yeah so there's definitely, there's some moral dilemmas to be had in this world. And I think that's kind of what's so cool about, about this is it, it doesn't give you the answer. It asks you the questions and lets you make decisions. 
Mm. Uh, the game progresses in a certain sense. You're going to go to certain locations. You're going to do certain things. There are several checkpoints that are required, but for every required part of the story, there's probably 20 or more bits that you could just skip and not do. You'll know less about the world, but it won't keep the story from happening. It's definitely easy to skip a lot of stuff. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, the, there's a there's a line that I love from Troy Baker on the podcast he does with uh, Lana Pierce and uh, the dude who did the soundtrack to Journey and the dude who made the John Wick game. Go figure. But um, where he basically said, a lot of people think that the player in a video game is like the director, but that is nonsense. The player is the editor. And I think that that is 100% true. You choose what content you give a shit about. You choose how to go about it. Uh, you know, within the confines that Mr. Director Man is allowing you to do. Right. And they're pretty clear about what's what. The main quest is always at the top of your list. Uh, the side hustles will give you interesting plot stuff to deal with. I liked all of them, frankly. Cool. Uh, and then the gigs uh, will give you more background information, but they're not going to change the story in any meaningful way. Mm. Um, but they're fun and they you do get a little bit more of that flavor text and understand the world and meet more people like something mm. I there's actually a nice little easter egg I like in one of the side hustles the, specifically the Delamain one mm -hmm. that is the funniest thing I've ever seen when I love that it. car shows up out of nowhere and says words that will live forever <laughs> beep motherfucker so I found beep, one beep, of them right? so you, you Delamain essentially has some like some cars that are like off you know running rampant essentially yeah they have little miniature have like... artificial intelligence and they're not all very happy with the situation and one of them is basically just glados from portal <laughs> and uh... says like there's a test right here it says you're a horrible person we weren't even testing for that like the voice line from portal 2 is on this delamine funny. car and i and, love it oh, and i, I think it's it like so much. I haven't there played are a number of games that they reference yeah. Without without trying to be too yeah. like it still makes sense as it as its own game. If you've never played any other video games, it all makes sense. But I think it's amazing have, that it's... there's one Delamain that's like basically depressed. Yeah, he wants to commit car suicide. Yeah, so he tries to like drive off a cliff into a quarry and you essentially but he's an AI. Right. And you essentially talk him <laughs> off the ledge. So so like that's really good because um in a lot of cyberpunk and a lot of fantasy stories too, you play around with the idea of there being aspects of a person that you can channel, right? Right. That's, that's and, magic, and I think basically. that's why they chose GLaDOS. So yeah. towards the end of the, I forget if it's even the first game or the second, I think it's the first game. You have a bunch of pieces of GLaDOS that you throw into the fire independently. Mm, right. But and even each, each piece has its own personality. One and the, and just gives you the recipe for cake. That's kind of what <laughs> they're going with on the on the Delamain side story. Is they're like all fragments of his personality. Exactly. And you so, know? like that, because we're in a cyberpunk world and there's AIs everywhere. Inevitably, you connect that up and you just go, okay, so Johnny is the aspect of what twenty thirty three. Yeah. Yeah. Question uh, mark. Yeah. Question mark. But uh, you, you, as with everything, you're given a choice. If you round up, up all of the cars, you can put them in charge and delete the original AI. You can put the AI in charge and delete all the cars. Or you can try and like smush them all together and see what happens. I look forward to meeting the Bell Moss Collective or whatever that thing is called. Oh, yeah. I have the Black Moss Collective, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I have that. Uh, you, you just get gigs. they just spam you it's great they yeah. you just get text Bart messages Moss. Bart Bart Moss. Moss, you Bart just Moss, get yeah. text messages and they're just like here like yeah. like that's like it's the most annoying thing in the world but it's also like i want to meet these guys yeah fun <laughs> fun factoid if you do all the side hustles you'll find his body the actual <laughs> oh, guy nice. Bart Moss, who destroyed the internet yeah so like okay. mostly what my i've been focusing on a lot of is like the pan am with the alda caldo story because that seems to be what's coming up the most frequently yeah. and i'm just like there's a part of me that's getting to the bar i'm like bitch do it yourself <laughs> <laughs> you keep calling me for shit you keep calling me for help why don't you take yeah. care of your own shit one, one of the because things because then they, then she wouldn't owe you one one of the things she owes me like 12. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I think is like 
surprisingly yeah. unsurprising is that I can handle this game because I'm taking antipsychotics. Like, no bullshit. But also, the design of the quest log is pretty good. Like, mm -hmm. it's out of the way. Like, I got I reached a point with Skyrim where I was like, I don't know why I'm playing this. Like, I spent mm -hmm. 70 hours and I'm making a sword. I'm bored. I'm done. I'm done forever. I'm never playing this again. And like that was a good call on my part. That was basically, I'm sure, me in like some kind of depressed state, just being like, "Nah, enough of this." <laughs> shit. But like in this game, I'm just like, I'm chilling. And and part of that is definitely the drugs, but part of it is the design, because you can lose yourself in this. But there's also like good places to stop most of the time. It auto saves like every fucking ten minutes. There's a lot of stuff in here that feels pretty modern, and that's okay, because like. You can just say modern Skyrim slash Deus Ex, and you've adequately described this. You don't need to necessarily do some new genre or something like some people are saying, like, oh, it was overhyped, it was overhyped. Nah, it is yeah. a damn fine game that runs like shit on old hardware. It's The major problems with this been... game are all technical. All it, of it. Just should, it just needed more time. It needed, it so needed, it yeah. needed and more time. I'm a, little, I'm a little worried that this game is going to be, otherwise a good game is going to be tanked by it's, gonna, it's, gonna it's fall failure to the wayside. quality testing. I mean, that's a shame because this is, like, this is a world I want to hang out in. The answer yeah. is it already made its money back and no amount of giving people refunds is going to change that per se. But like, it already made its money back. We know how this works. This... Yep. This is going that tells to take... me they could have afforded to release it not like this. I agree. Yeah. And that was literally the headline of IGN's review for PS4. Uh, but like, it's just not like this because the, the yeah. Matrix line, when, when, not like switch, this. when Switch like dies, this. I think yes. Switch dies. Not um, like this. Exactly. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so like, like I said, this is Rockstar mo model, you guys. They don't give a shit about QA. It's outsourced, it's not internal, they don't think about it. And I wanna briefly bring up that Massive Entertainment, the people who do the Division 2, yes, that's right, I'm talking about it again. They have automated AIs that play the game through every time that they are going to release major updates. I'm talking about the base game of Division 2. AIs run around in the game and make oh, wow. sure that it's still completable. Yes. Oh, that is the scale of the problem that this game has. So it's not like I'm going to say I could have done it better because I couldn't. Right. But that's mm. the scale of the problem, friends. Yeah. yeah. And and that's the thing. This is such an ambitious game that how could they be naive as to not expect the level of issues that they got? Of course they were going to get these kinds of issues. Someone made the call. I'd have been shocked if they didn't. It. Well, I, yeah. I I mean, to just give them a little leeway is that, I mean, just remember, they had no publisher backing for this. They were doing it all that on is true. their own. But to be fair, they own GOG, right? Like, they are the publisher. <laughs> they are the publisher of their own. Yes, 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 yes. CD yeah. Project. That's, that's, yeah. Like, yeah. Project that's like saying Sony the made the movie CD themselves. Project. Well, yeah, they could afford it. CD Project Red is the developer. <laughs> CD Project, CD Project is, uh, is the publisher. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, So they own GOG. They, they have the means to do the thing. My buddy who bought it on GOG was literally like, I still haven't gotten my code and it's been like a day. Yeah. Like, there's a billion ways that they fuck this up as, from a publishing perspective, mm. which, you know, it's their prerogative. And, yeah. and like when yeah. you look, see scenes like the one I'm showing, you're like, you see what it could have been like. Mm. I mean, right, yeah. a, right a couple floors up in this building are those computers where when you attempt to look at the screen, you end up looking at your headless body instead, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I genuinely believe that like every work of, of cyberpunk is inherently postmodern because it's a corporation <laughs> putting out a game or right. a thing about how corporations are the fucking worst, which is like really fun. Like honestly, <laughs> CD Projekt Red might as well rename themselves Arasaka. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really do, I really do want to separate the story from the technical stuff like right. don't even, don't even because... get me started on looting and all the nonsense involved it looting. should be separate That's a good because example. the story the immersion and the graphics all are very good 
Mm-hmm. The fashion and not only is good, they, again, fantastic. Technical disaster. But the they scale well. The music is great. The yeah. writing is good. It's like all the creative stuff is top notch, yes. and all the technical stuff is oh god, yes. why did you allow this? It, 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 like yes. that's where they skimmed. Is where it, the time it took to get technical stuff rolling. Yeah, is, software. Is where they respect lost your programmers. And software your QA isn't guys. code. Software is not the programmer itself. Software is the process of that programmer making the code over time so that it avoids bugs and at the at the very very outset if you don't have the strong foundation you fucked up if you don't have the strong foundation bugs will happen and and like this is a software problem this is not even cd project red you guys javascript pisses me off every five minutes that is just the reality (laughs) of software in in the modern era it's it's ubiquitous and it's buggy as hell and like this is an entire industry-wide problem. It's a gaming industry-wide problem. It's a software engineering-wide problem. Yeah, I'm going to stop the video there because it's going to start giving stuff away, and we don't want that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. But uh, you, you get the idea. Uh, it is it is a lovely game, and I still am playing it. So for all the people who are screaming and crying about the bugs and the internet loves to throw a fit, I really do hope that over time they'll fix these issues. Most people will pick it up when it's not so awful. Oh, and that's what will, I'm doing. <laughs> and it will get its creative yeah. due in the end and I because think it deserves that for the all modern... the people that really made this special and different no one has done a game quite like this and it really shows the modern savvy gamer knows more or less like the adult gamer like in my in my work thread a lot of people were basically like i'm gonna play this in a year minimum because we've been through this with witcher 3 we've been through this many many times over like we know that this game is basically made for like two generations from now yeah there are people that are like that's what i'm gonna do is i'll wait for the game of the year edition right where you've got all your bug fixes you've got your uh your dlc content is in there and it's all just one bundle Mm -hmm. essentially Mm -hmm. yeah the refined experience the whatever you want to call director's cut And in terms of the future of this game, we have some clues because on that call, people asked about what about multiplayer? What about DLC? And their answer was basically, we're going to do DLC. We have no idea if we're ever going to do multiplayer. But again, I genuinely think this is the Rockstar model. And if they can help it, which they just printed a lot of money, so they can, um, they're going to do multiplayer. They're going to do all these things. Maybe the multiplayer will be free to play, but it's not coming this year. It's not coming next year. It might not come the year after that. Right. And I'd rather them take their damn time and get it right. Please don't do this again. <laughs> well, I think they've learned a valuable lesson from this. Or we can Have hope they? that they've learned a valuable lesson. We can, we can only find the out friends. based on their actions because whether, whether they learned anything or not, they're going to say the exact same thing because it's in their financial <laughs> Of course. Look, guys, the lesson is really the friends we made along the way. <laughs> sure. Love you guys. The Bye. lessons are the internal <laughs> demons we've met along the way. That's a good Literally, one. Literally, in the case of Johnny Silverhand. <laughs> <Sohan. laughs> All right, Stacy, you have the last upshot. <laughs> oh, no, no, Mikey can take it, even though he played zero. Yeah, so actually, Mike, you, after having heard all this, what do you think? Is this um, a game you're going to get someday? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you guys kind of said what in the, uh, the last paragraph is basically like, hey, you know what? I'm a savvy gamer. I, I, I know the history of this company. I've, I, bought, I bought The Witcher 2. I bought The Witcher 3. I know what I was in store for. And, you know, sort of the writing was on the wall. Like, they didn't show these versions up until the end. I mean, yeah. we've had shittier companies not do that. And I guess you can say, yeah, you know, oh, but CD Projekt Red, we have so much good faith for them. No, you don't. At the end of the day, like, like, why are you changing what we know about for the past 20 years just because this one fucking company is like, but we made you this. It's like, yeah, but you haven't shown us the goods. But holiday like, sales and Keanu Reeves. So, to be I mean, fair, for the people Keanu that Reeves. It, you know, for the people that bought it. And, yeah. and, you know, you guys are savvy gamers, but you made the decision to say, hey, you know what? You got what you paid I know for. What I'm, I, I know what I'm getting into. I, I'm willing to go through it and that's it. I'm sure you probably guys didn't probably think it would be to this level, but 
you know, from your experiences, it seems like you bought, you played it on the best options that you had. If you yeah. ask me, is it worth the $60 I paid for it? Yes. Oh, oh okay. that's interesting. Yeah. And I'm with that. And I'm with that too, because even when it hard crashes, you have an auto save that's pretty recent, for yeah. example. Well, that was um, their first patch is it saves every 10 minutes now. Right. Yeah. And so, and so like, I watched what I watched what Stacey was playing, and I was like, "This is fucking dope." Then I played it on PS4, and I was like, "Vomit, vomit, vomit!" Repeatedly yeah. vomit, repeatedly <laughs> vomit. A yeah, lot. just yeah. don't don't buy this on last gen hardware. Yeah, yeah. and then I bought right. it, and on my 1070 with an Intel i7, it's it's fucking gravy. I think yeah. the ultimate thing to say is, if you have a PC that can run it buy it there because the PC options are plentiful and you can get it yeah. to run optimally on your system. Yeah. If not, buy it on a next-gen console. Yeah. Wait until you have a next-gen console to buy it because it'll perform on there yeah. to a and, playable degree. And the loading yeah. screens are unlivably long. On yeah. That, so on I think console. that's one of the things I didn't get a chance to appreciate is a loading screen because I have it on an SSD. But yeah. the loading screens are kind of like this nice little interactive thing where it's like a, a, a scene shot and then they have like a screen or a radio playing somewhere on the loading screen. So it like gives you kind of like a newscast into the world. Yeah. And even that has like, even then in configuration, it has like slow hard disk drive mode, um, which I've turned on to see what happens. It didn't affect my frame rate, but I assume that it saves slow a hard disk of loading mode. time. Yeah, it's just that <laughs> like the loading throughput is way worse. No, right? no, I know. It just sounds yeah. funny. <laughs> no, I know it is. It's it's a slow, slow HDD. Hard disk <laughs> mode. Slow HDD mode is what it's yeah. coined as. Right. In the menu. Mm. Yeah. Just don't use my SD hard drive. Basically. All right, Stacey. Was it I the, don't have it. Was it the friends we made along the way, or was it the internal demons? <laughs> <laughs> which is the best option it's the cool but, sword but arms the internal demons <laughs> are the friends we made along the way oh, uh, 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 oh boy uh, well who's gonna take us out um the original net runner himself johnny silverhand yeah <laughs> Oh, all right. I'll do it then. Um, <laughs> Get up, samurai. <laughs> on my screen, man. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Listen, everyone. This is this is Johnny Silverhand, and this has been Party Chat Peoples. I condone this message. <laughs> it's not a political. It's, oh, whatever. Uh, anyway. I, I don't <laughs> know where you're going with that. So I think, I think I think Bye, this, everyone. Is, this is just where we wrap it up. <laughs> All right. It has been fun. But I'm going to go play time. Cyberpunk again. So I'll see you later. Well, I'm guys. about yep. to jump into some more Cyberpunk too. So. All right. Uh, Cyberpunk. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.